So I thought I'd just give you a little insight and um, a little bit of a catch up really. So yesterday is normally my, um, my day, Sunday is normally my day of cleaning the workshop, ready for the next tutorial that I bring to you guys. I didn't do that, I gave myself a day off. I felt like I needed it. Therefore, I am now a whole, gosh, can you see my breath? Can you see my breath in here? I've got my fleecy jacket on. I've closed the door. My workshop is well insulated, um, but there is a big barn door to one side and it is freezing. Um, I could really do with blocking off the barn door, putting something else in there and a small heater in here. Otherwise, you're gonna see me very breathy throughout the year. Um, so going back to what I said, I had a day off yesterday. It was really lovely. I went to um, an antiques um, place in Lincolnshire. So there was there's about six big buildings with antiques and and all sorts of things. There's less of antique sort of furniture that's kind of ready for paint. Um, a good mix of things there. I didn't find too much furniture. A lot of it was too good to be painted, to be fair. Um, but I did come away with a few staging pieces, which I'm gonna share with you, and a few other things. Let me know what the light is like on this image, because I've got my, normally I have my door wide open, I get lots of natural light in. It is gloomy today outside, and I've got artificial light, and I just want to trial this before I go into the actual tutorial, because um, I need, the light to be good for you guys to see the next tutorial. As you can see, there's a piece of furniture there, but I'll show you that in a moment. So, what I picked up, some staging pieces that I absolutely adore. I'll talk a little bit about what I've picked up and why. Um, so first up, I picked up this lovely, beautiful watercolour painting. Um, I absolutely love it. It is a beautiful image. Um, and I will use this in one of my pictures at some point. But what I will do is I will release it from its frame. I may even change the frame very carefully and remove the glass. Because as you can see, you can see my studio lights, the glass is very reflective and it looks fantastic on any staging of any furniture. So shiny surfaces reflect your light, your camera light, your studio lights, whatever. Um, so it will come out, it may go back into this frame and then once I'm done, I will carefully put it all back together and it will hang in my home. So I will use this. It's absolutely stunning. Let me show you close up. Really nicely done. And I picked this up for six pounds, just six pounds. And I think one of my faded grandeur um, kind of styles, this will look really wonderful in there. So top tip, if you're hanging, if you can get a lovely oil painting or something like that in the background, which won't have glass in it, you are on a winner, but they're very expensive. But I just thought that was so beautifully done. Um, and I love these sort of chateau gray colors and the soft white to pink tones in the roses. So that's one thing that I picked up. The other thing is, which isn't good for camera, I love a jug. I picked up this jug. Again, it was five pounds. It has got damage in it. Never, I don't know if you can see, there's a, there's a fix, but that doesn't ma matter to me. This is just so beautiful, but as you can see, quite a shiny glaze, but I will make this work. No, ma no matter what, I will make this work because I love, I love the little spots. I think it's so innocent and I think a jug is just divine. Um, just alone on a piece of furniture. I think jugs are my favorite things of all time. Obviously, because I bought two jugs, another five pound find. Now this is slightly different. The glaze has a softer luster, which I know will photograph really well. It almost would go very well with this picture, actually. Let me bring the picture back. Because of the green, the green vase that's in the picture. So the two of them might go quite well. With contrasting colors, maybe a, a dull pink wall, maybe. So it might not get in a picture for a while, but it's there. I'll, I'll hold on to it for a while until the right project comes to fruition. So that's another good um, staging prop because it's got a soft luster. If you can find anything that's really matte, it looks really good, especially things that have got texture in them. 
texturized things look really good on photograph. So that's what we've got there. And then again, I can't resist little cup, this little tiny cup, blue and white. What's not to love about this? I think it's probably a children's size cup, but I, I think a little cup on, you know, stood on a book or anything. Staging for me is all, I always try and create a story in my staging, as you will be aware, especially the um, good morning. Um, God, can you see my breath? You can. That's how cold it is in my workshop. I really must lock the doors and put some heating in here. Otherwise, you're going to see me very breathy. Um, going back to staging, um, I always try and create a story. It's a different way of staging. Of course, if you're selling furniture, you need it to be very commercial. White or black backgrounds are really good. And nothing too personal. Don't put a picture of your great Auntie Ida in the background. Um, you need... Um, something that is just quite neutral, something that people can then imagine themselves living there. Whereas the way that I stage thing is, I put life into um, my pictures and sometimes it's abandoned life. So some of the most recent work you've just seen me do, like the chateau pieces that look as if they're in an abandoned chateau, I put things there that look kind of like a relic or like they've just been, the house has been um, pillaged of all of its beautiful things and if there's just a few fine things just left like empty picture frames just stacked up um, um, dried out flowers somebody's left the flowers abandoned so that's kind of what I do in my head I always try and put life into the pictures um, if they're a more modern piece I would go for simple things like if it's a really modern piece then I might leave um, you know a phone, you know, a mobile phone with a lovely tan case and a pile of keys on top of it, as if you'd walked through the hallway, dropped your things and left um, to go and put the kettle on. So life or a mug of tea. So a, a cup with actual tea in it where you can see the tea. Um, I think it actually breathes sort of life into your, in, in, well, especially into mine. I'm stumbling over my words today. I'm so sorry, guys. It's weird because I haven't done this for a while, but this is a good warm up because we've got that to do. Does that make sense? Just putting life into your pictures. Sometimes I'll use vegetables, fruit, all sorts of random things that just breed life into the picture. Um, of course, if you're going back to selling furniture and you don't want to create a story in your picture, then not only... Oh, I can't read. The, the questions go so quick. I'll come back to your questions after this. Um, yeah, where was I, guys? I'm losing it, aren't I? Um, it's too early in the morning. Let me show you something else that I've bought and see what you think of it. So I've picked up this. That's the base of it, or part of the base of it. It's got a big hole in the bottom. Can you guess what this is or where it came from? If you're in the UK, you might be able to guess. If you're elsewhere in the world, you may not be able to guess what this is. And it's solid plastic. It's really plasticky, quite toughened plastic. That's why I bought it. Um, this is, if you're in the UK, if I did that, you might guess what it is. <laughs> this is um, a Valicia beacon. It's actually off what we call a Valicia beacon. So we have the zebra crossings in the UK and this is the light fixture that sits on top. So I'm told. So that was the base that screwed to the lamp post and then it had a light in it which would have flashed orange on and off orange to let the pedestrians, pedestrians, pedestrians cross the road. So I picked it up. This was just 15 pounds. And the reason I bought this is because it, you don't find tough in plastic in a, a severical shape like this very often. That is hard. And I thought this would make a really lovely interior prop for my own home. And I can add texture to this and make it look stone-like. 
So almost like a stone sphere. So it's lightweight. It can stand on the kitchen worktop if I wanted it to, um, in the hallway. And I'm going to add textures and different variations of colours. And I think it will look absolutely, it will also look good in, in staging pictures. And it's easy. So if I want to bring it in and out for, um, from, for some staging against a big piece of furniture, I can just move this around really easy, but it will look like stone. So that's why I bought this. I just thought, what a find. I will do that on a, a small tutorial. Um, I can see it, you have a great eye, thank you. I'm not gonna read anymore because they go. Um, but yeah, I can see this as a great prop in my tutorials, but we'll have fun with this. I will do this as a, a small tutorial of texturizing and adding different colors. We might go, we'll either go gray stone or sandstone, I'm not sure, but this will paint up really well. And because the plastic is quite, as you can see, this has got a soft fluster. It's well worn. I will probably prime it with something just to make sure it got really good grip, but we will use chalk paint. So that's another staging prop. Let's show you the piece of furniture that I picked up. I'll, I'll ramble you around. Right, if I go fuzzy, it's because I'm moving the camera. I don't know whether, guys, if you're there and watching, let me know if this transmission's good because every, I'm, I'm boarded up in here and I have no idea whether the connection's good or not. Um, so let's just move you down. Here we go. So there's the piece that I've just bought. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about this furniture because a lot of the pieces that I do in the UK, um, if you're not in the UK, you won't, you won't get this style of furniture. We grab a lot of this style of furniture. This is a reproduction. It looks amazing. Um, it's a, a mahogany veneer. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, we get this an awful lot and we pick it up for pennies. I've actually paid 35 pounds for this. It's not without its flaws. Can you see here? There's a big section of veneer, not veneer, not veneer, come on, leather, been scratched off at some point. There is, I don't know if you can see on camera, there's some deep scratches there and there. It could be fixed. For all of you wood lovers out there, it could be fixed, of course it can. Um, but this isn't an antique, guys. It is just cheap reproduction furniture. And the proof in the pudding is, I don't know whether you can see this, I'm gonna bring you out of the camera holster. I just wanna show, let's see. Can we see, can we see this timber here? It's really hard to see. This is actually, it's plyboard. It's made of plywood. I'm going to come back out. So the actual piece of furniture is made of plyboard. It's not solid. This is a thin, cheap veneer. This was made in the last 30 years. Um, some of the wood, you can see it's lightweight wood. It's nothing special. Chipboard in certain areas. But nevertheless, it's a beautiful piece and it's a beautiful shape. And that's why I bought it because I thought it's curved all the way around. It's not, not got a flat back. So it's kind of oval in shape. Um, connection is great in Australia. Oh, so that's good. So this is gonna be my next project. I've got to contend with what I'm gonna do with this, either fix it, or I'm not gonna fix it, it's too far gone. Um, I'm probably gonna strip it, I think. Strip it, the only problem is there's a lip that it sits into, so I might have to fill that, I don't know yet. Um, so this is gonna get a whole new makeover. Again, I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna be a bit repetitive in my tutorial because this, I feel like this piece needs maybe some moldings and it needs to be my typical style, my faded grandeur, lots of layers of things, which many of those layers you will have seen in the tutorial. What you won't have seen is it will be probably a different colorway and I might layer things up in a very different way. So it will be worth a watch, I should think. Um, fingers crossed, I hope so. So that's where we're at. Me and my Valicia beacon and my um, chipboard piece of furniture. The reason I've brought that up is many of you um, furniture painters, you won't care seeing me paint furniture, but the odd, and I mean a one in a, one in about, 5,000 people come on to my um, Painted Love channel 
and say quite negative things about painting over furniture. And, you know, I understand that people love beautiful grain. I get it. I understand that. Um, you're on the wrong page if you're or the wrong channel if you're looking at somebody that paints furniture for a living. So if you feel indifferent about how grain looks, go and find a woodworking site. That's what I usually say to these people. Go and find that and appreciate looking at wood grain. I have a different feeling about painting furniture. I have traveled the world. I've been in some amazing places. Um, you know, one place that absolutely changed, because I love wood grain as well, and quite often I'll stain wood and change the color of wood. Um, but one place that really changed my mind was um, in Sweden. And we went to a castle and it's every surface in that castle was painted. It's um, Gustavian painted, uh, the Swedish Gustavian style. So check that out on Pinterest. And that lovely age old pattern of old paint, the good furniture, the Chippendale furniture was painted from the beginning. Good wood was painted from the beginning. So. Um, I will defend painted furniture here and now. You know, there's nothing wrong with placing paint over a piece of furniture. If you do it really well, it will have another very long life. This could have ended up anywhere, landfill, I don't know. Um, but if you give it another good life, if you do it well, it will exist in its new outfit. That's me off my soapbox. Anyway, I'm not gonna stay here any longer. I just thought it'd be really nice to do a live. I've still got a little bit of cleaning to do in the workshop before I start filming this one, I think. I've got another big piece over there, but I think I'll go with the smaller one. Believe it or not, the smaller ones definitely have more work in them. And especially this, it's gonna get some wood you bends. I've got some quite exciting coming for this and I'm gonna keep it, I think. I think this one is gonna be an absolute keeper, so. I think the, the tutorials that I do when I'm keeping the piece of furniture, when I know that I want to, tend to be quite good ones because I put all of me into it. Any, anyhow, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna tune out from this live. Thank you for all that watched it. It was nice to be here and um, seeing you guys that came up. I will read the comments. I'm sorry that they go too quick on here. Facebook, they stay a little bit longer. YouTube, they seem to flash up and go. And um, with my dyslexia, it's really tough. So I will go back and read them. If there's anything you want to know about any of this, just give me another message. I'll see you all soon. I'll see you in a few days, hopefully. I might not make Wednesday because there's a lot of editing, a lot of work to do because I've had a day off. I might not make Wednesday, but I might jump live just to pre-warn everybody. So I might come back live and do something else. So we might even paint that, that spherical ball. <clears throat> Promise, if I don't make the usual Wednesday night tutorial with this piece, I maybe bring this, maybe bring this um, Felicia Beacon and we'll play with that actually live and we can have a party on Wednesday. So that's the promise. I will see you all very soon. Take care.